Hey guys, I'm Nicole. In today's video, I'm sharing with you a writing tool that will help you to make your writing more emotionally impactful and meaningful to your readers, no matter what kind of writing you're working on, whether it's nonfiction or fiction. I came across this writing tool called The Ladder of Abstraction while reading Jack Hart's book, Storycraft. Jack Hart was a managing editor at The Oregonian, the Pacific Northwest's largest news paper, and he also helped guide several Pulitzer Prize winning articles to publication. And in this book, he shares everything that he learned during his career as a journalist. Now, while the book is aimed at people who are writing nonfiction, I have also found the tips that he shares to be universal no matter what kind of writing you are working on. And I've also written two other articles about his book where I share more writing tips that I've learned from him and I'll put links in the description to both of those. But today I'm sharing this concept that I came across called the ladder of abstraction. So what is the ladder of abstraction? Basically, the ladder of abstraction is a diagram that helps you to visualize how far away you are from the action of a story that you are telling. And I looked this term up online and I discovered that it was first popularized by S.I. Hayakawa in his book, Language in Action. And basically what the ladder of abstraction does is it looks at how language goes from being very concrete and detailed to becoming more and more abstract. And in his book, Jack Hart is looking at how we can apply that to stories. So to understand this ladder of abstraction, let's see it in action. And Jack Hart gives us the example of a magazine article that an author is writing about a person called McDougal, who is a riffer rafter on the Illinois River in Oregon. So basically at the bottom of the ladder is the concrete and detailed specific storytelling. And this is where you are describing a scene and Jack Hart calls this the scenic narrative. And here we have McDougal, who is the character of the story. And when you're on the bottom of the ladder, you're putting your reader into a scene where they're almost experiencing it as if they were there in person. Now, as the author writes, he might expand who he is describing in his magazine article. So he might start talking about McDougal's party, the other river rafters that are with McDougal. And then perhaps he wants to explain a little bit more about people who are river rafting on the Illinois River. And then he might move up the ladder to talk more about all different kinds of people on the river, which would be Illinois River runners. And then maybe he wants to make his magazine article even broader and give us more detail about all river runners and their sport. And then maybe he moves up even further to talk about outdoor adventures. And then he's telling us about lessons that McDougal is learning on the Illinois River. And he's applying these to all human beings. And you can see that as he gets to that narrative, his concepts become more abstract and he's no longer narrating a story. So here Hart calls this summary narrative. And you might be thinking, okay, this is really, really interesting. So maybe, when you're writing fiction, you're more concerned with the bottom rungs of the ladder and you're going to stay in that scenic narrative. But if you are writing a more technical article or a blog post or a scientific article, for example, you would be at the top of the ladder where it's more abstract. And this is where Hart makes a really, really interesting point. And he says, you gain comprehensiveness as you climb the ladder, but you lose the ability to form concrete images but you've traded specificity for something that also has value. If you can generalize about a larger class, you have knowledge that you can apply in a variety of situations. So greater meaning resides on the ladder's upper rungs. Good writing constantly ascends and descends the ladder of abstraction. And I think that last line in the quote is really important where he's saying that good writing is constantly ascending and descending the ladder of abstraction. And this means that no matter what kind of writing you're working on, you really do want to have both that 
scenic narrative and that summary narrative. And let's see why this is the reason. And first, let's look at nonfiction writing. So first of all, with nonfiction writing, as you ascend the ladder of abstraction, you are able to appeal to a wider audience. So for example, with the author who is writing this magazine story about McDougal, if they are then going to be talking about all outdoor adventurers, they are able to include a wider audience. So you might not be a river rafter, but you might enjoy outdoor activities, and maybe they are applying lessons that McDougal learned to something that would apply to you as well. And if they were even able to expand that further and really talk about universal lessons that anybody could learn from McDougal's adventures, then you would also be interested in reading that piece, even if you weren't interested in river rafting. Now, secondly, when you're writing nonfiction, it's also important not to stay at the top of the ladder in that abstract language. So for example, if you're writing a really, really technical piece, it can get really boring and dry, or your readers might not be able to understand your concepts. So you want to move down the ladder of abstraction and give them an example, a story that will be more concrete for them so that they're able to understand what you are talking about. And I have a blog post that I wrote about this that shares how you can introduce stories into your nonfiction writing. And I'll share a link to that in the description below. But now let's talk about how you can apply the ladder of abstraction to your writing if you're working on fiction. When I first came across this diagram in the book and I was thinking about it and how it would apply to fiction, the opening lines of Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities came to mind. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times, it was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness, it was the epoch of belief, it was the epoch of incredulity, it was the season of light, it was the season of darkness, it was the spring of hope, it was the winter of despair. So we can see that this opening to A Tale of Two Cities is very, very, very abstract, and that would be at the top of the ladder of abstraction. And we often see this with the great books, the books of classical literature, the ones that we consider to be very well written, that they often run up and down the ladder of abstraction. So Charles Dickens doesn't begin with a story here, but this very philosophical opening. And you can see this in books like Dostoevsky's The Brothers Karamazov, where part of the book, it's a novel, but part of the book is a philosophical, theological treatise. And we can also see it in books like John Steinbeck's East of Eden, and really all of those books that are considered the classics. And one of the reasons why these books are considered to be classics is because they run up and down the ladder of abstraction. So they give us these really fantastic stories with wonderfully written characters, but they also incorporate philosophical questions and problems that are universal to humans no matter what age they're living in. So if you have a book like A Tale of Two Cities that's set during the French Revolution, we are not living during the French Revolution, but Dickens includes struggles and themes that are universal to you no matter what age you are living in. Now, in many of these books, like in The Brothers Karamazov, you'll have a character who just philosophizes for pages and pages and pages. And if you're writing fiction, it depending on what kind of fiction you're writing, you probably don't want to do that. But you can bring in those abstract concepts with a line of dialogue or talking about like what the characters are thinking about. And there's a really great example of this in the film adaption of The Two Towers by J.R.R. Tolkien. And in the movie, there's this really great conversation that Sam and Frodo have, and they're feeling overwhelmed by this adventure that they're on. And Sam turns to Frodo and he says, It's like in the great stories, Mr. Frodo, the ones that really mattered. Full of darkness and danger they were, and sometimes you didn't want to know the end. Because how could the end be happy? How could the world go back to the way it was when so much bad had happened? But in the end, it's only a passing thing, this shadow. Even darkness must pass. A new day will come, and when the sun shines, it will shine out the clearer. Those were the stories that stayed with you, that meant something, 
even if you are too small to understand why. So I really love this quote because it encapsulates why the ladder of abstraction is so important and it's telling us that when we are able to incorporate those themes and those struggles and apply them to our readers and give them a message or a lesson to take away from our story, those are the stories that our readers are going to remember, the ones that are going to stay with them. And there's a really great quote from Marion Roach's book, The Memoir, project and she writes, let us into your story by shedding light on our own dilemmas, fears, happiness, or wide-eyed wonder. You have to give readers a reason for this thing to live on in their hearts and minds. So I hope The Ladder of Abstraction helps you with your writing. You can use this to remind yourself to move up and down The Ladder of Abstraction while you're writing and maybe you can think about if you're writing a nonfiction piece, if you could make your piece of writing apply to a wider audience, or if you could move down the ladder of abstraction to introduce a story that would allow your readers to better understand the concepts you're presenting and to make your piece more interesting to read. And if you're writing fiction, you can think about how can I put in a line of dialogue or some other lines in there that would elevate the story to have a deeper meaning for my readers. So be sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to me here on YouTube for more videos like this one. And I'll also leave a link to my email newsletter in the description box below so you can subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and get more writing resources. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic week. God bless and I wish you all the best with your writing projects.